So it was December 2016, and I just submitted my manuscript for the Best Urban Hikes Denver, and I needed a new project, so I decided I would go ahead and walk all of Denver's neighborhoods. When I made that decision, I had no idea that there were 78 of them, and it would take me the entire year. Nonetheless, I thought, I don't want to do this by myself, so I went ahead and put an a ad up on Walk to Connect and on Meetup, saying I was going to walk on Mondays and Thursdays, we were going to get lost, we probably would go places we shouldn't go, and we were going to go on walks not tours. I really didn't think a lot of people would sign up. And lo and behold, when I checked on Monday, I found out that not only was every spot taken, but there was a wait list. And they were filled by these ladies. <laughs> these are an amazing group of women. Now, I didn't realize that not only did they sign up for the first Monday, but they signed up for every single day for the entire year. Now, we didn't know each other. Maybe one person knew one person, or one person knew another person, but the ten of us did not collectively know each other. So we met, and off we went on our 300-mile adventure through Denver. And we decided to walk Denver's neighborhoods alphabetically. So we started with Athmar Park, and we ended up in Windsor. And by walking Denver's neighborhoods alphabetically, we did a patchwork approach to learning about Denver. Every neighborhood had its own piece of history, and every place we went, one piece kind of gathered together with the other piece, but none of it was chronological. If we would have walked Denver chronologically, we would have started in the center of the city and kind of worked our ways out. But we, we went to Auraria, then we went to Bear Valley, and then we were out in Stapleton, and then we were back in Berkeley, and all these places. And what we found as we put this patchwork together, that Denver's got amazing history from the World War II housing boom, from the 1965 flood, for the founding and Auraria, and all the way out to the race relations in Park Hill, the diversity issues going on and the gentrification issues going on in Five Points, we saw it all. I learned three things about these ladies. The first was, I asked them how, how many of you are uh, Denver natives? Give me a shout out. Okay, so of the 10 of us, we, our average length of time in Denver was about 25 years. Most of them were natives. I had only lived here four years. And what I found out is we naturally had some barriers that we needed to break. Because we knew we were going to walk in some neighborhoods that didn't look like us, and we didn't look like some of those neighborhoods. Matter of fact, in Chaffee Park, we got pulled over by the police because they wondered what 10 white women were doing walking through the neighborhood. And what we found out is we had to lower those barriers in order to really engage and get rid of our misconceptions and our preconceived notions about particular places. The second thing we learned while we're walking through Denver there's a lot of homelessness in Denver. And no matter if we were you know, in Stapleton or downtown, we would see homelessness everywhere. And the reason why that homelessness exists is because Denver's a really great place to live. A lot of people want to live here, and because of that supply and demand, housing has gotten really expensive, forcing some people onto the street. And as we met these folks on the street and had conversations and, and asked about their day and figured out what was going on in their lives, what we realized was the second most important thing, or maybe the most important thing of our entire adventure, is that the only difference between homeless folks who live on the street and us was a house. The third thing, <laughs> thanks. The third thing we learned is that everybody who lives in Denver, no matter what neighborhood they lived in, they have a lot of pride in the neighborhood that they live in. You know, going all over from you know, Athmar Park down to Windsor and hitting all these neighborhoods, there was always someone that had a story to tell. Uh, as we get, got down to the end of our walk, we were in Sun Valley. And if, if you don't know where Sun Valley is, Sun Valley is on the west side of the Platte, um, kind of near Santa Fe. And it is actually, the city of Denver has identified it as possibly the next new Rhino. Well, right now, it is mostly income-qualified housing, and about 95% of the people that live there live in income-qualified housing. So this one day, we were walking through Sun Valley, and a, a young man came out of his house, and he said, hey, what are you all doing? And we said, well, we're walking through all the neighborhoods. And he says, let me show you my trash cans. He was so proud of the art contest that the community had just had in the neighborhood that he took us around to all those dumpsters and all those trash cans and shared with us how proud he was of his neighbors and the artists that live within his community. So what I want to say to you tonight is whether if you're all the way out in Green Valley Ranch, looking back at Denver, at this beautiful scene in Denver, or maybe you live in Baker and you see this fence along the church that tells you that love wins, Denver is a fabulous place that really needs to be explored. So what I would like you to do tomorrow, or maybe after the snow clears, is go out, 
put your tennis shoes on, lace them up, go see your neighborhood, and go see the neighborhood next to your neighborhood. I'm Denver's Urban Hiker, and I hope you'll find me at Denver Herb Urban Hiking. Thank you very much.